In a 2003 study um, that was at the University of uh, Toronto, they they separated recordings of 25 diverse voices into the ones that sounded gay and the ones that sounded straight, and people picked up on features of the gay stereotype, um, and those were voices that were, as I said, higher and more melodious. Um, and essentially, basically, you've got a man who speaks higher, more melodious, sounds more feminine, feminine voice man, sounds like a gay voice, right? Now, there were there were some other small studies um, here and there. I've I also looked at a study that looked at, I mean, I think oof, quite a quite a few people, more than 25, I think maybe nearing up to a hundred or so. I, I that's off the top of my head. But I've looked at a few different studies and the the, the kind of consensus is that okay, melodious voices, um, feminine sounding voices, that's what makes a voice sound gay. Right? That's what if you hear that, you think that's gay. But also, that's not necessarily true of people, right? You can't you can't sort of hear a high and melodious voice and be like, ah, that's a gay person. In fact, they, they had people listen to people's voices and try to determine whether they sounded gay. So let's say you had a hundred a uh, hundred men, um, you know, some of them were gay, some of them weren't gay, and you just have them say say the same sentence, right? And you have other people listen to that and try and decide which one of the, which one of these men is gay. But sixty percent of the time they were correct. Yeah, I was gonna say, did they did they have like a high rate of accuracy in guessing Oh, no, no. 60% is <laughs> better than chance, just but better than chance. Yeah, not yeah. much. Not by there, much. There, there's something there, but not much. <laughs> exactly. So it's it's not really predictive, uh, this this idea that having a higher, more melodious voice is something that is indicative of gay people. But there might be sort of more reasons behind that, right? So why do you think that, um, that gay men might, you know, appear to, or there might be a stereotype of gay men having that kind of voice, that melodious higher voice. What do you think might lead to that? Maybe it would be because because they're gay, they don't feel the need to fulfill the stereotype of being a masculine mm-hmm. man. So yeah. that, that might be it. So they don't feel as much pressure to speak in a way that's stereotypically seen as masculine because they don't feel the need to fill that role. Or yeah. specifically want to differentiate themselves. Yeah. Like a re- almost like a rejection of that role. Yeah. Yeah. So let me jump in really quick as well, because I've, I've got another study that looked into the gay voice and what this person found. And it, again, it wasn't a huge study, but what they found was that um, the stereotypical gay voice, uh, the similarities between gay men's voices, wasn't necessarily the pitch and the sort of uh, melodious aspect of it. It was just a, a it said here, a more contemporary pan-American accent um, oh. was adopted by the gay people in this study. And apparently it was sort of um, a slightly more, I guess, fanciful, uh, sort of a stylish sort of way of talking. And I, that's how that was picked up. So I just feel like a lot of like gay lingo comes from like African-American vernacular English mm-hmm. that kind of started in America in like gay ballroom mm-hmm. scenes. So it would make a lot of sense that like across the world there are gay people that are emulating that because that's maybe the representation they've seen. Exactly. So what I'm kind of trying to bring together here, the picture I'm trying to build in your mind is that this isn't a case of choice or not choice. Yeah. A lot of it is, an env- is to do with an environment, right? Yeah. Um, so when you look at straight men that have the stereotypically gay voice or gay men that have a stereotypically straight voice, yeah. I th- what you find is that this is more down to their upbringing and the environment that they're in. As in, if you're raised around more women, you might have a more melodious voice like that because that's how you learn to speak. Those are the yeah. people that you were around. And something that you brought up earlier, Luke, about me is quite pertinent to this discussion. <laughs> Do you remember what it is? Well, I was you're probably referring to when I said that if you go drinking with Corey and someone's being basically a dickhead, um, Corey being a... A, a tall man, <laughs> not afraid of confront confrontation, <laughs> will change his voice to be like, "You're right, mate. What's going on? Why, why are you being like this?" <laughs> right. And what I find interesting about that is that you say, "Change." I would. I'll change my voice. Yeah. Now, that implies some kind of intent. And I remember when I used to work in an office, Noah would sometimes hear me using my work voice at home and he'd be like, you don't talk like that. Why are you, why are you talking like that? Why are you trying to make your voice sound different? The first time I remember you doing it was when we went to Wagamama's and we, we got to the front door and you'd be like, table for four, please. And I was table like, who the four, hell please. is this man? Well, <laughs> to be honest, look, who is this guy? Uh, uh, you, of all the people I know, you change your voice in situations more than anyone. <laughs> yeah, and it's not intentional. <laughs> no, and I know, you this country as well when you're, you're 16, like a chameleon. 17, yeah. So it's amazing. And so my, and this, and this is what I think is really interesting. It's the concept of code switching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily intentional. I yeah. can do it intentionally. I can switch into my more Scottish accent when I want, yeah. but 
I kind of learned when I moved down that I need to talk more like this because English people don't understand me otherwise and they'll make fun of me if I talk the way that I normally talk. Yes, we will. You say silly words regardless of whether or not it's in a Scottish accent. <laughs> yeah, but I pronounce them silly in a Scottish accent as well. So then it's a double way to make fun of me, right? Hell not yeah. only do I use words like illustrious, I also say them like illustrious. This is this is proving fruitful. <laughs> I, have a, I have a quotes list of Cory from when we first started dating and half of them are just like, oh, this is proving fruitful. It's like, why? <laughs> because it was... It no, was, it was. You're right. <laughs> it just... was. It was. <laughs> so my point here is code switching. And that's kind of why I wanted to bring you on for this episode as well, Noah, yeah. because you've got a kind of unique perspective to that. So obviously, I'm a trans guy. So when I was younger, before I started testosterone, I was really insecure about my voice. And I felt like it sounded feminine because it was high. So I would try and speak in a more masculine way. I'd try and get a bit more like grit there. And then when I started taking testosterone... Um, <laughs> there are a lot of people watching my testosterone <laughs> updates and I felt self-conscious that my voice wasn't dropping as fast as I wanted it to so even in my testosterone updates where I'm like hey this is my voice and I'm one month on testosterone I would purposely make that try and sound deeper even though that completely defeats the point of like doing a voice timeline yeah. um, but I think that's a, it's a very common thing with within the trans community like there's a bunch of trans guys that will like speak as low as possible and it just damages their vocal yeah. cords and it comes across as unnatural but it makes them feel more comfortable and it's the same with like trans women where they're like they go through like phases where if they're doing voice coaching their voice will get gradually higher and higher and higher just by the way that they're speaking as well it's i think the important thing here as well is that it's not just higher and lower yeah, yeah and i yeah. think that's the thing that it's you texture. can you can not tell necessarily but if someone has had voice training from a professional yeah. They very much will sound different to someone who is just trying to make themselves oh, yeah. feel I mean, more like, comfortable. Abigail Thorne. Like, Abigail Ab- Thorne. Like, if you watch <laughs> Philosophy Tube, like, her voice has changed so much. Insane, honestly. And, I, like, I, I genuinely, I, I think it's so interesting. Yeah. Because, you know, just just the knowledge that if I, if I wanted to, I yeah. could go and learn how to make my voice sound more feminine yeah. and I could just do that voice when I wanted and no yeah. one would and no one would know and I could switch back and forth yeah. like that is just something that we're capable of but yeah. we have this thing in our heads where we think yes this is what man voice sound like yeah. this is what woman voice sound like but actually <laughs> what we think is the is the sort of determining factor for a masculine and feminine voice is not the only factor and so we can yeah. <laughs> we can be tricked in multiple ways it's also like you were saying it's it's like it's not always voluntary or you're not always aware of doing it mm. even like I mean like everybody does it like yes. if, they're, if they're going into a shop they're like if you're being really nice to like a shopkeeper you'll be like oh thanks yeah like it, it's it's not just doing it on purpose exactly and, and for me that's why I kind of wanted to point out that I'm, I just did it again there I went a little bit more Scottish when I'm when I'm going out in public and I'm talking to someone, or if I was talking to someone that I'm working with, or talking to a stranger, or the other day the the Virgin Media Man came to you know sort out our internet. Yeah, you're right, and I'm like, all right, man. You're yeah, right, bro. you're right. Yeah. Oh, cool. No, sorry. Don't worry about it. Looks full Wi-Fi. And, no, you can feel. I can feel that down here. This is my comfortable. This is a comfortable range for me. I remember like when you first heard this, you were like, "You're making your voice sound lower." Me making my voice sound sound lower. And it's like really, I'm really forcing it down here. Me sitting talking like this. Down there, that's that's my that's my comfortable where my voice sits. But also up here is a brighter, higher, like more head area that it also comfortably sits. I have different places that my voice sits. It feels comfortable. That one does not sound comfortable. I have different places that my voice sits yeah, and it feels yeah. comfortable. This is a really comfortable place for my voice to right. sit, and I actually really like it being here. Right. It just it feels nicer to talk through. But there's different there's different ways that it talks. There's different ways that it sounds rather, and. I'm not always necessarily consciously in control yeah. of that. So I have a hypothesis for why this we might be seeing this sort of thing where, you know, you might see gay men being slightly sounding more camper or slightly farther along that sort of camper end of the, the spectrum of voice sounding when, in, when compared to straight men. And I reckon it's probably got something to do with the fact that when you're around straight guys, there's kind of like the masculinity thing there going on, yeah. right? It's, it's sort of competitive masculinity. And if you deviate from masculinity in any way, you are targeted, yeah. not and not in major ways necessarily. I'm not saying they're going to wow. beat you up if you sound. No, I'm not saying that. I mean, that if you're they, around, they do. They can, <laughs> but I'm saying that they're not necessarily going to beat you up if you sound a little bit higher. Yeah. But if your voice, when you vo- when your voice cracks as you're a teenager or even as you grow up, you get the piss taken out of you for yeah, it, right? Yeah. Any deviation from like a the kind norm. of yeah. you know kind of monotonous like that, yeah, is seen as different and is sort of targeted. So it makes sense that straight men are gonna more sit in that kind of monotonous like yeah I'm sitting here voice than the more sort of like all over the place voice that you know people who are more liberated might use because they're not 
sort of confined by the thing of masculinity. I remember when Tom Daly came out and my dad was like, oh, you know, he's just putting on that voice now. Like, he didn't have that voice before he came out. And I'm like, do you not think that he didn't have that voice before he came out because he was worried about being outed or worrying about being targeted? But this is the thing. This is this is, this is is the key point here. The, the framing of it, right? He didn't have that voice before he came out. He had both of those voices yeah. in the same sense that Probably your dad has both it. of those voices. Yeah. And, okay, for example, straight men are rarely going to be in a position where they're probably going to feel comfortable to, like, you know, be a, be a bit all over the place. And especially when they're younger, you're going to be taught more to kind of talk like a man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, implicitly, not necessarily sort of explicitly, Luke, talk more like a man, but... It's so funny. I never felt the need to talk like a man. Yeah. <laughs> like I just, I just never cared. Fair enough. I was, I was, yeah. Just, Which is why yeah. people might say your voice sounds a bit more. Cat, that's why right? they said I sounded gay. Probably. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's probably actually. Why. Exactly. But that's it. Yeah. See, you get told you sound gay, yeah. which trains that's boys so funny. to sound straighter. Yeah. Right? So you want to sound straighter. And <laughs> what I want to, what I want to get across <laughs> here so is so that, silly. Is, yeah. that, is, very silly. is that men's natural voices are not monotonous, right? You, if you speak more, you have the capability of not doing that. Yeah. Right. And it's just kind of how you've trained yourself to speak. And when we get into the, the con- concept of a sort of a lisp, right? Environmentally, if you're around people who are talking like that and you start to emulate them a little bit more, you might sort of subconsciously start to have a slightly less clear sibilant S. I feel like that's the case in like so many different situations. Like even like we went to America for six weeks for tour last year. Oh God. And by the end of that tour, I wasn't speaking in an American accent, but like because of the people I was around, like say for example, there's these like, there's these crisps called uh, Tostitos. Oh, Tostitos. Tostitos. And it's Tostitos is how I'd pronounce it in my accent. But because I was around so many Americans, I was like, oh, just pass the Tostitos. Tostitos, like, yeah. It's like that you, you change even subliminally, like, without even realising This it. is what I tried to explain with the sort of change of accent. In moving down to England, my accent changed, not necessarily intentionally, but just through sort of trial and error. Very sort of very subconscious trial and error. People make fun of you for this. People people call you gay for that voice. Or people ask you, what did you say when you say something in an English accent instead of saying it in a more American way? Yeah. Instead of just, instead of, like, going through that all the time, you kind of will start mm. to switch it to being mm-hmm. more the accepted version. Yeah. And I think what we do is that we forget that we are very malleable, right? <laughs> like what we are is not um, is not set or absolute or constant necessarily. It's very much influenced by the environment that we're in. So, you know, like the gay voice, does it exist? To an extent, yes but not because gay men are fundamentally different from straight men in any way. And also, the gay voice doesn't doesn't exist just in gay men. Yeah. It exists in like all men. Yeah. It's just a case of whether you are sort of tr- you've trained or whether your natural sort of um, way of talking, yeah. you know, or your sort like, of more most comfortable way of talking is to be that less monotonous or more monotonous um, and less melodic or the sort of more melodic changing the pitch more often. Yeah, Valley Girls, like LA Valley Girls, mm. I find that they sound like they have a gay voice. Yeah. Because they'll, they'll be using like loads of vocal fry and they'll yeah. be feminine and the way that they like enunciate stuff. Like it sounds like a stereotypical like camp voice. So it's yeah. not just like gay men that have this voice. I think it must just be like environmental. Exactly. And you, you, you hear things like, you know that very posh, okay, Chris Eubanks. Yeah. All right. Um, or Chris oh, Eubanks. Oh, well, no, he, he had vocal coach. He yeah, had, he had vocal coaching, yeah. which which makes him sound like Entirely the most different. soft, like softy, like poncy man. Yeah. But th- that's got nothing to do with anything no. about him or his sexuality. He's a boxer. He beats the hell out of people <laughs> yeah. and has sex with women. Like, he, he just, just speaks like that. <laughs> he just had vocal training that made him sound like this. Yeah. And we're, we have these sort of connotations that we draw from that. Yeah. And, and, you know, we were watching this video, the three of us, last night. And... Luke and I agreed on something and you disagreed. It was a gay man and a lesbian. And the question was, which of these two was more masculine? They were deciding between themselves which one was more masculine. I said that they were exactly as masculine as each other. You said that the lesbian was more masculine than the gay man. Yeah. And what I said to that was, no, they're, if you look at them and look at how expressive they are, their voices and all of that stuff... They're both as masculine as each other. It's just when you see masculinity coming from you know a woman... It almost makes it seem more masculine than when you see sort of masculinity coming from a man. So the man was quite feminine and the woman was quite masculine. And because we expect women to be feminine, we kind of saw that as 
you kind of see that as being more masculine and because you expect men to be masculine you see their femininity as being more feminine almost do you know what I mean? Oh yeah I just still think she was more masculine. No that's perfectly fair <laughs> I, I just kind of bring up that concept especially because you know a, a man speaks a little bit more like a little bit more expressively and it's like oh you talk like a girl Yeah. yeah. you know I just find this whole sort of thing really interesting I think code switching is is the key under sort of lying well, so what is code switching so code switching I mean do you know what code switching is I do but Why don't you I explain what code switching is? so you could explain it no you explain <laughs> what code switching is <laughs> it's changing the way you present yourself or like how you talk depending on the situation mm -hmm. and it's not always mm. in your own control yeah it's more just like it happens a lot with like like black communities mm -hmm. where like if they grew up in like majority black communities and they go into a white space they like subconsciously change the way they speak to become more like accepted within the group yeah mm. exactly so black people moving from um sort of black communities into a white space yeah we'll switch from speaking more say if they're american aave to speaking yeah. more uh standard american english yeah uh, because of and, and and that comes from sort of i guess persecution right yeah in the same sense that if i'm in scotland i'm talking normal scottish the way that i that I grew up speaking. Yeah, because right? I get persecuted for being English there. Shut up. Because <laughs> because that's just where that's just how I that's just how I communicate with these people most effectively, right? Yeah. Whereas when I'm in England, the most effective way of communicating is is the way that I'm talking now. Yeah. Now that's not an intentional switch. And code switching is this really in interesting thing because it is spoken about most often in the context of race, but it isn't specific to race. Yeah. It, it, you know, it could come with sort of gender, sexuality. It could almost any sort of thing. It's down to just how we communicate with others. Mm -hmm.